above Deke's head, y'all do see this nice shiny logo from DraftKings. Shout out to DraftKings Sportsbook. Today's show is officially brought to you by DraftKings, only the top rated sports booking app in all of North America. We know they are safe, secure, and the thing that I love the most is they are reliable. And like we always say, man, whenever we're going to talk about any company, we got to have something for you. All right. So for the new customers out there, you download that app, you make your initial bet five dollars. You're going to get two hundred dollars in bonus bets instantly with the promo code MOTES. It's a simple concept, man. And I mean, they got a lot of cool things going on in terms of opportunities to potentially win more earnings, man. When you talk about some of their anytime scoring prop bets and things along that nature. But we also understand that sometimes you get lost in the sauce and it could be a little bit rough on you. You might develop what we call a gambling problem. And if you're in New York, it's a number that you can text. But for everybody else, the digits to dial are 1-800-GAMBLER. Raymond Yarbrough, why does Fields get so much hate for doing the same thing other quarterbacks do and is winning and making plays? Is it perfect? No, but man, he is still a dangerous SOB. Now, I have seen some of the people that do give Phil some of the hate, and I mean, I get it. They just, I think their approach is they don't want to come off as hypocrites. We think of how everybody talks about Lamar Jackson, specifically when we're playing him, and they talk about that man so bad. But then you look at Justin Fields, and to an extent, it's like, yo, that's what Lamar does. Is just he's doing it on a little bit of a cleaner level, but you can see it's very effective and you can win with this. They just don't like how loud we get with the praise for Justin Fields at times because they're going to look at it and say, yeah, bro, you had about 205 yards of total offense. But the way that the Fields supporters will talk about it is as if he threw for 300, ran for 250, and, you know, we're 4-2. And I just think that that's why people get on Fields very similar to when people would support Kenny. And then it became the Kenny hate got really, really loud and at times over the top. They just don't like the hypocrisies at times with it, man. But to me, Phil's is doing what you want at the quarterback position. He is making sure that we win games. He is putting the offense in the best position to win. He's leading us. That matters. That's all a part of being a quarterback. I just think that at times, because it's easy to see a Mahomes or a handful of guys that are elite, and that's the standard. So if it doesn't always look like that, then, yeah, they look to tear it down. But Justin Fields is more than capable. That's why we were excited to break him over here, man. So I get both sides of it, though, man, in terms of people that discredit him or do hate on him. And I get the ones that support him, man, and are fans of him because, yo, he's nice. But at the same time, there are certain parts where you just want it to already be there. And it's just unfortunately not there just yet. That's the beauty of it to me, though, is mm -hmm. we're still winning games with uh -huh. Fields doing what he's doing right now. I think he really has raised his floor, but I think the potential yeah. is astronomical. I think he can, with with the talent that he has, mm -hmm. he can become one of those dudes. And I, I like that you brought up Lamar Jackson because I looked at Fields' stat line yesterday, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking to myself, mm -hmm. this kind of is like a few years back Lamar Jackson right. stat line. and. Mm -hmm. As much as we do at times knock on Lamar because, I mean, part of it too is when we play Lamar, we, we do do pretty good against mm -hmm. him. So I, I'm not as worried about him when he's going up against our defense. But you look at Lamar Jackson over the course of his career with those type of stat mm -hmm. lines. Now, now I think over the last year or two, he's really elevated, he's elevated. his game to yeah. another level where he, has, he, he is starting to reach his full agree. ceiling of what yes. he can be as a quarterback because of the, the, the increased uh, just passing element of his yeah. game. Like he, he looked awesome yesterday. Uh, but anyway, like he, no matter what, no matter what type of stat lines or what uh, type of game Lamar has put out there over the course of his career, what's his winning percentage? Like seventy five percent, eighty percent. He wins so, a ton. So my point is this: mm -hmm. if if we're getting this from Fields right now, his first year with the Steelers, after a, after a bad Chicago stint, mm -hmm. and he's he's starting to learn the quarterback game in a new way and a new perspective. If we're getting this right now, like six games in. Mm -hmm. And we're four and two, and we can at least continue to win games, and then he can develop mm -hmm. and at some point reach that full potential. 
then man, that's that's something like that. You got your franchise quarterback. That's that's why I'm excited about Fields because mm-hmm. we got to see it from a Lamar Jackson. So I don't. Why can't we see it from Fields? Because if anything, to yeah. me, Fields has the better arm talent than Lamar. He has the stronger I arm. I just think that the big thing is you run the risk. You just run the risk. I mean, there's nothing that says he can't do it. The same way when Baltimore had to decide to no longer build around Joe Flacco and they decided to change it all over to Justin Phil- or to Lamar Jackson, we saw how they built their team specifically to highlight him. Right now, we technically haven't done that. But if they decide that this is what they want to go with, then you just got to lean into it and take everything that comes with that. If they don't, then, yeah, you lean with the rest element of it and you say, yo, best case, three years. And after that, we're going to be hitting the market or in the reset anyways. So I get it. I do. I do, man. Yeah, because if we're winning games right now, yeah. he, he could develop. He could start looking for a Calvin Austin, be, be able mm-hmm. to read the defenses better. Yeah. Like, what what can it be? You know, in two, three years, but not only that, maybe just even by the end of this year, you saw a Jordan Love last year. Green Bay took that risk, moving yeah. off of Aaron Rodgers. And Jordan Love wasn't looking that hot first, like, seven, eight weeks, but mm-hmm. they stayed afloat, had a decent – I don't think it was that good. Right? Were they around, like, 500? But then yeah. he, like, middle of the season, something hit. Mm-hmm. And he started balling out, and you look at him now, like he's he's easily a top-ten quarterback. I don't know where he'd be ranked, but he's been playing amazing. So you, you just never know. That's – that's why I'm liking about Fields. That's why it's like, bro, let's let's see what he does against Rodgers Sunday Night Football. Like, I'm in, I'm excited about that. I, I'm very intrigued of what he could do. Because that's the one thing that Russ has over Fields right now is going toe to toe with like a rod, like a, like a big do or die moment. Like you trust him more. Mm-hmm. But I also think there is something to be said uh, for a person. Earning that, like getting the opportunity and, and earning that right before your, your your very eyes, you know, like we we wouldn't necessarily know what Jordan Love was capable of. If we didn't if the Packers didn't have him out there against the Cowboys in a playoff game last year, and you know, you see what he's capable of. So I, I'm excited to see what Fields is capable of in those type of moments. I I think the Cowboys game on Sunday night, as I said, a little bit of step back, but I also liked the fight. I also liked. How he got us in position to win the game. Up 17-13, defense had to make a stop. So, I, I, hey, man, we're 4-2 with Fields. I think he's playing good. Let it ride. Nah, like I said, I can see that. I could also see the people that say, man, all that positive energy surrounding the Steelers right now, what if I put this dude who actually can take full advantage of it because he knows what he's looking at. He knows how to get rid of this thing, and he's already done it countless times as well. That's why I can see the people who wouldn't also see Russ bad. But I like both of them, man. I everything you said spot on, man. I can see it. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what I mean. If Tomlin, I. What I, do you think Tomlin's gonna do? I do think Tomlin's gonna pick Russ. If if it's me, I'm picking Russ based on everything you just said. But I'm saying, yo, I've already seen this dude do it countless times. I don't have to hope that he can develop and hope he can do it consistently and hope that he can sustain it and hope that everything works out and hope that it doesn't look like Chicago at any point in time. I've already seen Russ do it. I've laid, I've, man, six weeks, man. How long do I got to keep waiting? No, let me at least see this, man. Maybe it don't take six weeks. Maybe it's take two weeks. Maybe it's two in a buy and boom, we there. But I don't know until I know. So I don't think it kills me if I let Russ get these two, go to the bye, and then reassess. I just personally want to see it because up until now, it hasn't been the headshot. When I look at Phils, I love the potential. I love the excitement around him. But I was saying this when he was in Chicago. There was his, I got a dude that I already have seen do this. I would like to see what that looks like in all of this positivity as well because he was in Denver last year. Denver is not Pittsburgh, man. The way that we run in here, the way that we've clearly shown you that it doesn't matter if you're Kenny Pickett or Justin Fields, you can have success here because of the culture, the way that we play our game and the mindset that we come out there with. So what if I actually take a guy that has shown that he can do it and put him in this exact same scenario? What could that look like? To me, I just kind of interested in seeing it at least. Yeah, I think he's gonna go thrust. That would that would be where my money is. I 
I think it would be a savvy move to do the buy thing, though. You catch what I'm saying? I I want to see, like me personally, I want to see Fields another week. I'm, you know, I think he's earned mm-hmm. that opportunity. Just yeah, let it ride. Keep keep going with Fields. Keep going with the vibes. But with the buy coming up, where you only have the two, you could almost you just say like, you trying. know what? Come on, bro. I like how Fields have been playing. I'm going to mm-hmm. give him these two weeks to the buy, and then we'll reassess. One way or the other. Because that's not closing the door on us. One way or the other, you got you got a nice little groove, man. Yeah. Um. Like I said, I just personally, and this could just be because of how I view quarterback play. I just don't think that through six games, Phil has closed the door. So if you I didn't close that. the I, door, I think it's a legitimate conversation. Right. Don't so get if me you wrong. didn't close the door, you're not good. I'm not going to feel guilty about wanting to see a Super Bowl champ and a guy that has been in two Super Bowls as the guy. I don't think you should feel guilty nah, about that. I want to see that. Like you had six weeks. We thought you was only going to get three weeks. You got six whole weeks. And we still, we not full on doing the, all right, it was that and that and that and that. But as a whole, it hasn't reflected this just yet. So, yeah, I want to see it. And it's not that I don't believe in Phil's. It's just that I'm very confident in Russ because of his full body of work, recent, long term, and understanding what that looks like out there. And also playing against it out there, it's like, bro, that thing is tough to play against, man. Like, Justin Fields, I think he's just early on in his career. Man, I want him to still be here. And that's kind of what I was like, was it a week ago, two weeks ago, we joked about the, yo, has he done enough that we would want him to be here long term or at least in that capacity? I still want him here. But I still want to see Russ, man, yeah. Yeah, I don't think you should have to feel guilty about that. I mean, yeah, I think the conversation is legitimate. At this point, uh, yeah, Fields has left the door open a little bit, but I also think Fields has played good enough to continue to roll with him. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things. I mean, when they say both things can be true, man. It really is. Like, yeah, um, yeah I, th- I think he's been – it's it's pretty crazy because, like you said, coming into this season, I don't think I would have predicted that. I, I think he's been this the, is the most consistent guy on seen. offense this yeah. year for us. Between him for him and Frazier, I'd say. And, and if you wanted to throw an Aussie in there, I guess. But but this is like this is the best professional like stretch that we've seen from him outside of the end of last season in Chicago. We're feeling great if Russ ain't on the team. Like this isn't even you like a conversation. Yeah, it's literally We're talking just about because Russ what is feels here. his potential is. Right. Oh man, what if he does take uh, take it up another step like mm-hmm. midway through the season, almost like yeah. a Jordan Love last year? What what is this offense capable? Of? What what are we capable of long term with him potentially and, being and, our franchise and the quarterback? The excitement around Jordan Love is different when there's not Russ or Rogers or yeah, Roethlisberger not, right. or one of them dudes behind you. It's just for Fields right now. He doesn't have a traditional number two behind him. He has a former Super Bowl champion that has done it in his league for years. That's the only reason this is different. If this is Mitch, if this is just Kyle Allen, if this is respectfully to Kitty Pickett, if this is Kitty behind him, I don't think we have any of these convos. But it's because it is Russ. And you can't talk Russ even last year and not say, yo, he did still make plays at this level. We talked about what he did, Bills, Chiefs, and it was, it was like a three, four game sweep. It's like, yo, he's already still showing that he can still do those things with all of that chaos. If Kenny's still here and we're four and two, it's Kenny and Russ in the quarterback room. We're four and it's two. It's different because Kenny's a first round well, draft pick. I was just about here. to say that. Yeah, he's I first mean, round we're, draft pick. we're four and two, and let's say Kenny is more like what we saw in the Bengals game in the first half of that Cardinals game before it went down. But if you're playing like that, then you're a top five, top ten guy. The problem is anybody could do it for one game. Can you do let's it just for say, seventeen? Let's just say Kenny's better than last year. We're yeah. four and two. He's a little bit better than last right. year. You think Tomlin's leaning more, sticking with Kenny? I I would think so. Kenny's the homegrown first. That's rounder. what I'm thinking. Yeah. You get way. That's I, why dude, Kenny we was. Saw it, yeah. Not if smart you're the for first leaving. rounder, you are going to get every single opportunity to succeed in that organization. When you leave, you might be a first rounder, but you're not our first rounder. So now you're just another dude, bro. If Kenny's here, it's a way different convo. Way different convo. Yeah. Man. That's why we said what we said when he left anyways. Because it's like, bro, as long as Russ has been hurt, the stat lines could be similar. And realistically, outside of the rushing yardage, you could make a case that, yeah, there are some similarities here. 
but that you know you can't go back and change it. And you make that decision, man. This kind of would come with. Yeah, because if you think about it, they gave they are... Kenny more of an advantage than Fields did uh, versus Russ. Because once we signed Russ, we said mm -hmm. it's an open competition mm -hmm. between Russ and Kenny. But Russ, we're, we're going to give him the pool position. They've been saying Russ is QB. Once we QB, got Fields, QB, they said what? you're the backup. Yeah, but it's going to be a competition or whatever. Right. Uh, we'll still say Russ pool position. But like when we traded for Fields, they said you're coming here to be the backup. Like yeah. don't get your hopes mm -hmm. up or anything. Whereas. Once Kenny was here, we bring in Russ. Communicated from the jump. Open competition. From Russ has full position. We're going to respect his veteran status, all that, mm -hmm. and his pedigree. But and low key, I, I think they would give the them the advantage in this scenario too. Low key though, I don't remember the pole position convo starting out until it was Russ versus Fields. I don't remember him saying pole position when Kenny was here. Uh, yeah, yeah we, maybe I it was so we fast. All, I don't we know. all just kind of knew, like, yo, that is Russ. But the communication was still that Kenny was. You might be right. It was only like a week. Yeah, Kenny I, was still the guy. You know what? Maybe the it, I don't think it came out of Tomlin's mouth, but maybe it came out of reports. That's fair. That yeah, Russ was going to have uh, more of a leaning going into training camp in the yeah. off season than Kenny, but it was still going to be more open competition than what it was between yeah. Russ and Fields. Because dude, think about it. Like even with uh, Russ's calf and all that stuff, mm -hmm. he was still named QB one. All right. You it's think it's a different story weeks? if Kenny is in that training think camp and, in these preseason games? It's been four regular season games before we even heard Russ getting back into practice. And he was still listed as QB1 on the roster. Because there's definitely a case Kenny plays better than Fields in the preseason. We know he's going to cook you, in the preseason. Yeah, he, he's all preseason Kenny. So like, <laughs> Kenny go cook that preseason filthy. It's just, yeah, yeah. just a tough look, man. Tough I look think that's real life, though, bro. Yeah. But you live and you learn. Hopefully for him, he learns and it comes back around to him. And he takes better advantage of the opportunity, man. It's just wild. Yeah. And that's the one part that I would say with Phil's, even with, I mean, not Phil's with GP. GP go crazy at times. He hasn't went all the way there. That's like nuclear. <laughs> when you go up and you like, y'all want to get traded, that's nuclear. You've completely like, you don't wigged out a little bit. And sometimes you think it's going to work in your favor, but. Well, let's trade for Devonta Adams and see what happens. He's he's trying to go nuclear, but you see, even with him, though, isn't kind of got a little quiet. No, a little I'm bit. saying because in Kenny's case, we brought in a Russ. So Ooh, I, I think in apples to apples is we bring in another receiver. But we need him to go nuclear. If he goes nuclear, then I think it happens. <laughs> I don't want GP to go nuclear because I like GP. I know I like the fan. My little guy likes him. yo. I'm a fan of don't go nuclear. GP don't go nuclear, please. 